everybody likes a story, right? There's drama, lots of characters, and ultimately, we learn a lesson or two. And one story that Darby and I particularly love is the story of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Let's take a quick poll. Who in this room has either read the book Charlie and the Fa Chocolate Factory, seen the version with Gene Wilder, or the newer version with Johnny Depp? Cool. All right. of you. Folks are familiar with it. Amanda and I have been having an ongoing discussion. Uh, she prefers the old school Gene Wilder version. I like the newer, slightly quirkier Johnny Depp version. Well, I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree on that one. But for those of you who are a little less familiar with the story, here's the quick Cliff's Notes version. So the story is about Willy Wonka, who's an eccentric chocolate guru that for some reason, mysteriously, he closes the door to his factory. But then one day, he opens the doors back up to five lucky children who are the winners of a golden ticket contest. And these children, they get a whimsical tour of the factory and see all of the magic and imagination behind Willy Wonka's confections. But all the while, Wonka is testing their character because he's looking for the perfect partner. And we won't really spoil too much the end of the book since you guys have already read it or seen the movie. But ultimately, Charlie Bucket is the winner of the contest, and he wins the keys to the factory. So as communications professionals, Darby and I see that when Wonka opened the doors to his factory, that is a story about communicating the power of science and innovation. And it's that decision to communicate that helps save Wonka's business. So we've always had a few questions about the story in general. Why did Wonka decide to close the factory at all? And then why, after so many years, did he decide to open it back up? And why, for so long, did he decide not to communicate at all? So in thinking about these three questions, we're going to draw on lessons, or as we like to call them, sweet spots, both from the story of Willy Wonka and some examples from the real world to help put it into context and help us understand the value of, and the power of communicating science and innovation. So, let's get started. Sweet spot number one, having the courage to communicate. So, you know, we can ask ourselves, why would anyone need the courage to communicate? Well, one reason is that communication can be scary because we're afraid of opening ourselves up to the competition. And that was definitely the case with Wonka. He was so convinced that if he shared his innovation, that the evil Mr. Slugworth would come in and steal all of his ideas. Well, I think we can all relate to that here in this room. Who here isn't afraid of the competition coming in, taking your ideas, and surpassing your success? But Wonka realized that in order to truly be a leader, he had to open himself up. So one good example of that is the everlasting gobstopper, the candy that literally lasted forever and was a parent's worst nightmare. Who could believe in the magic of the everlasting gobstopper if they couldn't see it to come to life? So the sweet spot for Wonka was having the courage to communicate. So in the real world, what company has the, ability, has the courage to communicate even in the face of competition? Tesla. Tesla defines success. You think electric car, you think Tesla. When it comes to the auto industry, Tesla's always in the spotlight. But what makes them so successful? One thing is the courage to communicate. In June of this year, Elon Musk, their CEO, announced to the world that he would share all of Tesla's patents with any company interested in developing an electric car. You can see them up here. From a business perspective, this is crazy. Who would do this? Sharing your secrets with not just one, but all of your competitors. But Musk understood that leadership means leaning forward. And he wanted to understand what was possible when he provided open access to his science. On the one hand, this is a big step forward for the greater good, more electric cars on the road. But on the other, Musk's ability to communicate is propelling the company forward. The best performing stock of 2013, Tesla. 
So the sweet spot we learned from Tesla is having the courage to communicate. So now let's get back to the Wonka story. So maybe a second reason that Wonka was hesitant to open the doors to his factory is that because communicating innovation was really hard. And so maybe it was just easier to not communicate at all. And that brings us to sweet spot number two, simplify science to make people believe. So communicating something as complicated as science is actually really hard. But the problem is, whether you're proactively communicating or not, you're still sending a message. And that was the case with Wonka. By not communicating, he was sending the message of an old, stodgy, paranoid company, instead of sharing the imagination and the magic behind those closed doors. And you know, it was actually a brilliant idea for Wonka to invite those five lucky children into the factory because we all know if you can explain something to a child, then most other people can understand it. But it was that decision to bring those children in where they could see the genius of Wonka at work. And believe me, Wonka was quick to remind them that when it comes to making candy, no one can even compete with Wonka. And you know, those kids are gonna go tell all of their friends about it too. So the sweet spot from Wonka was simplifying science to make people believe. What we're talking about here is using science to create the reason to believe in something. In the real world, Nike is a great example of this. Have you guys seen those LeBron James 12 shoes? Aren't they cool? And aren't we glad he's back in Ohio? <laughs> but what makes them cool? Nike could have focused on the fact that LeBron is associated with them standard celebrity endorsement. Or they could have focused on the trendy colors or the way they look when you wear them. But no, Nike decided to focus on science. Now we could walk you through one of the 554 patents that Nike filed last year, but let's be honest, that sounds super boring. <laughs> Instead, let's spend a minute with a couple of the images from their advertising campaign. So up here on the right, uh, you have a sketch, uh, clearly drawn by a technical expert. Uh, this is not an off-the-shelf model. Then up here on the right, you have uh, the fibers in the sole of the shoe. I have no idea what they do, but I'm sure that they make me run faster and jump higher. Um, and then we have these hexagon shapes, which Nike calls the world's most perfect shape. It sounds good. They describe how it's mimicked in nature, and um, they use examples like the honeycomb and the beehive. So this is the, the picture of something very complex, but yet it's so simple. We may not understand the science behind the shoe, but when we look at this, we don't have to, because we get it. Nike's ability to simplify science has meant the shoe has reached great success, and it's really paid off. Nike sold $300 million in LeBron shoes in 2013. So the sweet spot for Nike was helping to simplify science to really make people believe, especially in these LeBron shoes. So one last time, back to Wonka. So maybe a final reason that Wonka was hesitant to open the doors to his factory is because he realized that he would have to do it all alone. He didn't have anyone to turn the keys of the factory over to, and so without the perfect partner, what was the use in planning for the future? So that brings us to sweet spot number three. Communicate partnerships to drive relevance. So Wonka's vision was to find that perfect partner. He was looking for a loving, caring child that he could share all of his precious candy-making secrets with. And ultimately, Charlie was that perfect partner for Wonka. He was young, full of ideas, and shared the same values uh, as Wonka did. But why not just hand the keys of the factory over to Charlie and you know, he and Wonka could sort of keep that moment to themselves? Well, instead of doing that, they decided on having a dramatic reveal of the partnership where the two of them crashed through the roof of the factory in the great glass elevator and announced to the world their partnership. 
Well, it was that decision to dramatically reveal their partnership that kept Wonka's business relevant. And so in this case, the sweet spot for Wonka was not only having the right partnership, but communicating that partnership to keep his business relevant. So who in the real world has both found the right partner, but also shared it with the world? 3M. 3M was in trouble. They had a problem. They spoke to consumers, and only 15% of people under 35 even knew who the company was. A company responsible for such iconic brands as Scotch Tape and Post-it Notes was in danger of becoming obsolete. So they decided to start talking, focusing on their communication strategy. And they started talking about one of their partnerships that was sure to drive them into the 21st century. 3M partnered with Evernote, the digital note-taking app, because they understood that while a small, square, sticky piece of paper was their past, their legacy, the why, the ability to provide organized people with the tools they need to be successful, could live on in so many ways that were more relevant in our tech-driven and paperless lives. On the website, they say, here's two ideas that live on. In a changing landscape, 3M chose to evolve their business model, but they also started talking about it. 3M and Evernote have built their story focused on the future and how they're delivering what's needed to achieve what's possible when it comes to organization. So the sweet spot we take away from 3M and Evernote is communicating that partnership to keep them relevant. So today, we've talked about three different sweet spots for communicating science and innovation. So sweet spot number one, have the courage to communicate. Sweet spot number two, simplify science to make people believe. And sweet spot number three, communicate partnerships to drive relevance. So each of you in this room today are part of organizations that have something new and exciting to share. So what are you waiting for? Get it out there. Tell the world about it. And you know what the good news is? That communicating science and innovation is not only beneficial for the greater good of your business, but it's doable. And each of you can do it. You know, they say silence is golden, but it's not your golden ticket when it comes to being a leader in innovation. In order to be a leader in innovation, Communications is your golden ticket. Communicating science and innovation is critical, it's achievable, and it may just be the sweet spot you need for your organization. Thank you. Amanda Sellers and Darby Pearson of Spectrum. I love the sweet spot. The sweet spot is one of my favorite concepts, and I'm sure that's true for many of us in the room. I used to think the sweet spot was about discovery. But it's not. It's about sharing. It's well, about communi we'll, oh, sorry. well, discovery is one part of that. But how can people know about your discovery and your innovation if you're not sharing it with the world, or at least the, some of the important parts of it? Thank you so much. Ready? A new understanding and innovative use of the sweet spot in a formula of three. Amanda and Darby, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you for sharing the story of the sweet spot. Thank you thank for coming. You. Thank, thank you so much.